Hi, and welcome to Beetle Dave's Beetles channel. Yes, it's that time of year, and we're on the road again to the fabulous city of Liverpool. So come and join me. So yes, a big welcome to Beetle Days Beatles channel today. Hope I find all you fantastic people doing really well out there. And thank you so much for joining me on this special video. So what I've decided to do this year is to visit some locations that are connected with the Fab Four that are a lot less well known and you certainly don't hear much about them. So come with me now on a Beetle Dave's mystery tour on a little visit round Liverpool. So I'm just on my way now driving to Highton in Liverpool and I'm just going to Highton Parish Church where I'm going to be looking at one of the graves within the cemetery. So here I am now at Highton Parish Cemetery where lies within the grave of Stuart Sutcliffe who died on the 10th of April 1962 of a brain hemorrhage in Hamburg. So let's go and take a look. So no one really knows for sure how Stuart Sutcliffe actually received the blow on the back of the head that actually led to his death in 1962. Obviously there's various stories out there and one of them involves the Silver Beats who were playing at Latham Hall on the 14th of May 1960 where an altercation between Stu and some other guys backstage led to a particular blow to the back of Stu's head. It was then obviously that Pete Best and also John Lennon got involved in the fight and John Lennon received a broken finger in this particular fight. In another story, it was actually Pauline Sutcliffe, Stuart's sister, who actually pinpointed a particular occasion when John Lennon actually had a fight with Stuart, and it was John who delivered the fatal blow to the back of Stuart's head. So, we're just gonna approach Stu's grave now. So here is then the grave of Stuart Sutcliffe and as you can see he was born on the 23rd of June 1940 and he died on the 10th of April of a brain hemorrhage in Hamburg in 1962 aged 21 years. So in my opinion though if ever there was a fifth beetle I think Stuart Sutcliffe certainly deserves that title. In every story though there's sadness and tragedy and the Beatles stories is no exception. And what's really sad though in the end is that obviously Stuart Sutcliffe, he never lived long enough to see the guys make it and actually become well famous and to become the biggest band on the planet. So it's another beautiful day in Liverpool and I'm just on to my first location of the day which is in Kensington. Can you guess where I'm going? So on the 14th of July 1958 John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Colin Hanton and John Duff Lowe, collectively known as the Quarrymen back then, came to the Percy Phillips studio here at 38 Kensington, Liverpool L7. It was on that day that two tracks were cut straight to disc, which were in spite of all the danger which was written by McCartney and Harrison, and of course a Buddy Holly classic, that'll be the day. That particular day it cost 17 shillings and 6d to cut the two tracks straight to disc. And after all taking a turn having the disc, John Duff Lowe, being the last to have it in his possession, went to sell it at auction in 1981. But Paul McCartney intervened 
and purchased the disc privately. So McCartney actually had 50 copies made up and gave them away to friends and family. But this really is the start of it all. So in 1981, due to public demand and with a little help from the fans, Liverpool City Council made the bold move and decision to name four new housing development streets after the Beatles themselves. The streets are named John Lennon Drive, Paul McCartney Way, George Harrison Close and finally Ringo Starr Drive. And these were collectively known as the Beatles Estate. So in 2011, just around the corner from these streets, some more places got some Beatles related names. These being Cavern Court, Epstein Court, and finally Apple Court, although the sign looks like it's been taken. So it's always nice to come and see this lady. Time for a sneaky walk down Matthew Street. Well, see, Scylla Black's back in town then. She wasn't here last year. Excuse me. And then we'll go there. The Hard Day's Night Shop, I think we'll have to go and have a look in there, I think. There's Joey Monin from Badfinger. Hello. And there he is. How are you doing, Joey? How are you? Brilliant. Beetle, looking really well. Beetle shopping. It's fantastic. Isn't it? Well, live a good life. Yeah. Absolutely. You look, you're looking really well, mate. You're yeah, absolutely brilliant. Look at this man. He looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Better than I do, and I'm 53. <laughs> brilliant. Thanks, Joey. We've got a couple of years on you. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Thank see you. you. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, enjoy cheers, mate. Oh, well, certainly will. Yeah. Good to see you.
That's Joey again. So here's the Hard Day's Night Hotel with the fabs on the top. Looking very majestic. So now we're at 12 Arnold Grove where George Harrison was born on the 25th of February 1943 and he was the last of four children that was born here. So George and his family lived here till George was about six before they moved to Upton Green. So we're now at 9 Madrine Street in the suburb of Liverpool, in Toxteff in Liverpool. And Ringo was born here on the 7th of July 1940. He lived here with his parents Elsie and Richard until they were separated in 1943. And then Ringo and Elsie, they moved to 10 Admiral Grove. So just making our way down Admiral Grove to number 10. And this is where Ringo spent 20 years until 1963 before Beatlemania. So Ringo lived here from 1943 to 1963, just before the Beatlemania here in the UK. His mother remarried in 1953 to Harry Graves, and it was years later that Ringo convinced his mother and Harry to move to the Gate Acre part of Liverpool. This really is an incredibly small house to live. I'm guessing it's only two bedrooms. But there's a bit of film where you see George waiting in a car and Ringo actually coming out of this property in 1963. They couldn't move anywhere by that point. So here is then the Empress pub as it looks today. Absolutely incredible. And Ringo's mum, Elsie, used to work here as a barmaid at one point as well. And obviously this pub has been immortalised on Ringo's album, Sentimental Journey. Absolutely incredible. They've done a really incredible paint job on this building and hopefully it's been saved for future generations. So we are at the Penny Lane roundabout or terminus as you can see there, that's in the dead centre of the road. And I'm just going to scan to the right where you can see a recently added sculpture of John Lennon with my daughter Emily there who's going to start her vlog soon. And this has been placed and sculptured here by Laura Leon. So that's pretty much it for today guys and it's going to be convention day tomorrow so I hope to include some film from that as well. So we'll see you all tomorrow. So it's Sunday and it's convention day today and the place is absolutely buzzing already. So I better get inside there and see if I can grab some bargains. Hey, peace and love everyone. I hope you're watching Beatles Day Beatles Channel right now. Peace and love. Thanks, Ringo.
Certainly a busy convention this year. It's absolutely jam packed. So here is the Brian Epstein statue that was unveiled in Liverpool yesterday on the 27th of August 2022, which is 55 years to the day after Brian Epstein had passed away. As you can see, Brian, he's on his way to see the guys at the cavern for the very first time. Everybody, hope you've enjoyed my Liverpool vlog for this year and thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you've enjoyed some of the locations that I've visited. So don't forget, as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, why not give us a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. This is Beetle Dave signing off from Liverpool. So another day in Liverpool then, and we are at 38 Kensington, and a bus has just gone straight by 
in front of me. Hello on the bus.